I'm going to do the types of reactions lab, the two uh, demonstration parts, so A and B. Um, these were done as a demonstration in class. So I'm going to talk about part B first, the electrolysis of water. So what I have here, this is called the Hoffman apparatus. It has all of this tubing that is connected, and it's open at the top. You can see right up here. So I poured water in here. And then these tubes are open to the outside if I choose to allow them to be. So when I turn the little knob here, like right now, there's a hole in there that's going to vertical so air can come and go. If I turn it sideways, now it's blocked. So nothing can, um, no air can come and go. No air can escape. The water level in the tubes right now, as you can see, is here, right here in the middle and here. So you can see that they're all even. All right, what I've got on the bottom of these are electrodes. So inside here are little electrodes, little wires, and they're coming out here. I've got little alligator clips, and I'm going to clip them to a battery. So black is goes with negative, so I'm going to put that on the negative side of the battery. And red goes with positive, so I'm going to put red on the positive side. And we're going to see bubbles are being formed. And I'll move this up so you can see it. You can see the bubbles are coming off of the electrodes there, and they're filling the top of the tube, right, where that air was. So they're coming in up here, but they can't escape. So as they fill in here, they're going to push the water down, which is going to come down here, right? It's connected to here, and it's going to push this water up. So as this continues and we get more gas on each side, we're going to see the middle rise further up and we'll collect the gas in here. So I'm going to allow this to collect the gas while we do part A. All right, so for part A, I need, I'm just going to kind of step this to the side a bit. Okay, so for part A, I need my Bunsen burner. A, we're going to take uh, copper 2 carbonate. So copper 2 carbonate is a solid and i'll show you what it looks like i'm going to put it in a test tube and it's kind of this greenish powder there we go okay so you can see it's this greenish powder and turn it all right let me get it better less reflection, okay? So I'm gonna heat it in my Bunsen burner here. And this is my only reactant. So copper two carbonate, you should be able to write the formula for this, okay? And as the only reactant, you should be able to determine what type of reaction this is. All right, so I'm going to light my Bunsen burner. So you should know what state. You should have your formula for this. I'm going to hold it in my uh, test tube holder, and I'm going to heat it. Now, heating it is not the same as burning it. I'm not adding oxygen, okay? We're just heating it up to speed up this type of reaction. I'm just going to kind of spread it out to kind of move it a bit as this happens and move it around. And you're going to see, and I'll hold it over and show you. We're going to have definite color change. That green you saw is now this black. Okay, and I'm going to take this wood splint, light it on fire, hopefully. There we go. All right, and as this burns, it creates a gas. We're going to see what happens. And this gas, it goes out slowly. And that gas is obviously not oxygen, because oxygen would make it continue to burn. That gas is carbon dioxide. Okay? So if you look at the instructions sheet, you will see 
the formula for this black product, which, or the name I should say, which is copper to oxide. So we started with copper to carbonate, we went to copper to oxide and carbon dioxide. So you should be able to write the states of each, the formulas of each, and then a full complete balanced reaction and make sure you have observations for all of this. All right, so back to part B. This has been going for a while. I want you to see that the water level in the middle tube all the way up here. And you can see it's pushed down here on the one side and all the way down to here on the other side. So you can see there's a different amount of gas in each tube because we have two different gases. So they separate in these ways for a couple reasons. One is they're different gases. I mean, you can clearly see we have more on this side versus less on this side. So we gotta figure out what these gases are. So I hope you've thought about this and you've, it makes sense that from water as you're only reacted, your gases produced, your products are hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So which one do we have more of is the question. Well, I want you to think about it for a little bit. Hydrogen gas and water and oxygen gas in water there are, it's the formula is H2O. So there's two H's for every one oxygen. So if there's two H's for every one oxygen, there are more, there's more hydrogen gas. So this should be hydrogen gas. This should be oxygen gas. So what I'm going to do is, well, and the reason this side would be hydrogen versus this side, in this particular case, I have my black electrode, which connects to the negative side of the battery. Hydrogen is positive, so it's attracted to the negative whereas oxygen is negative, so it's attracted to the positive, which is on the red side. If I flipped the electrodes, right, so this side was touching the positive and this was the negative, the hydrogen and the oxygen would have been in the opposite tubes. So I'm going to collect them in test tubes. So I've just got empty test tubes here. Um, and all I have to do is turn the little knob here, and these gases, when I do that, each individual one, will go up and into the tube. So I'm going to collect the oxygen first, go all the way up there, okay. and then I'll collect the hydrogen, all right, and so what we're going to do is, for oxygen, we're going to use, I'm going to turn this off, for oxygen, we're going to use what's called a glowing splint, because fire needs oxygen, so we're going to see if a splint that has been blown out, so it's just glowing, will either glow brighter or possibly even reignite. Okay, I'm gonna hold this here for you. All right, and I'm gonna blow this out and then put it in the tube. All right. There, actually glowed brighter right there when I first put it in the oxygen. Okay, so that is a positive test for oxygen. So we were right, that side is oxygen. A glowing splint glows brighter. All right, this one should be hydrogen. This one I'm going to um, put a flaming splint in. So it's actually on fire. And hydrogen right, won't make it continue to burn, there's no oxygen in there, but hydrogen is flammable. So it will burn with the lack of oxygen, though it won't continue burning. So what we're gonna get is a specific reaction when we put this fire into hydrogen gas. All right, here we go. Perfect. Okay, that's hydrogen gas. It pops and goes out really quickly because it burns and then runs out of oxygen, so it goes out really fast. And then as it goes out of the tube, it makes that popping sound. All right, you should have enough data now and observations to write a balanced reaction for parts A and B.